Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the GB Instruments GMT319 Analog Multimeter. This is being reviewed on the channel because it made Popular Mechanics top multimeter list for 2024. So we'll be going over all the different settings. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with an analog meter just because I've always used a digital multimeter. There are some advantages to using an analog multimeter. Uh, if you do have experience with them, from what I understand, there can be needle flutter that can be interpreted in a way that a digital multimeter can't be. So I think some of the old school guys might prefer an analog meter for that reason, or maybe just because that's what they were comfortable using. But we're going to be going through the wheel, going clockwise, talking about how to interpret the information that's up here. There's going to be a few confusing things like right off the bat, and that's these numbers here in the center. These numbers are for both AC and DC. And then this red portion down here for decibels, and you see this chart, that's for testing transistors. Now, I kind of scoured the internet looking for good information about transistor testing with an analog meter to interpret this dB, and I can't find anything. So we won't be covering how to do transistor testing with this meter. If you're looking to do transistor testing, I would really recommend this TC1 tester. This thing is awesome and it's going to be way better. I've noticed a lot of the like cheaper meters have that transistor testing setup thing and they all seem to be pretty much worthless. So use a meter for doing meter things. And then if you want to do component testing, such as transistors, get a transistor specific tester. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go through, this is going to be your AC volts. Now there's no AC current measurement on this meter like is common with a lot of these cheaper meters. Uh, another thing to take note is this is only a category two meter. So you'll want to know your categories of meters. Basically, it's for a lower rating, lower voltage. You'll just want to use this for testing components around the house, but you wouldn't want to be checking the voltage to like your panel of your house or something like that. Another thing that I've noticed when kind of just messing around with this meter, you're going to want to start with known values values with known resistive and voltage values to get a feel for how to read the meter and it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a digital meter around to verify that you're interpreting your measurements correctly. I know that sounds very silly. That's just the impression that I got. Okay, let's start with volts AC. Take note of your probe positions when doing these measurements. The only time you're going to need to switch over your your hot probe to this port is going to be for measuring DC current. I'm going to start with 120 volts AC at the 1000 volt scale and see what that looks like. This measurement's done in parallel. So you can see there is no 1000 volt scale on the meter. That's kind of frustrating. You'll want to put it to the 250 scale. And here we can see that we're reading 120 volts. I'm looking here at this first row in these black numbers to get my reading. If I do bring my scaling down to the 50, you see that needle is just pegged out. It's telling you that it's out of range. Move it back to my 250 scale. And there we go. We're back to that. Next up, we have battery testing. I don't know why these meter companies still think that we need to have 1.5 and 9 volt battery tests on our meters. Anyways, I digress, but let's go ahead and check the functionality. We should be looking down here at this battery scale and it's going to tell us good or bad. And the way that these meters do these battery tests is they'll, they'll simply just like load test the battery with maybe like 300 milliohms of resistance. Let's go ahead and check our 1.5 volt. Okay, these batteries are brand new. It's good that it's reading good. And with battery testing, it's pretty straightforward. Red lead to positive, black lead to negative. Again, this battery is brand new. Okay, and it's showing that that's a good battery. Great, I would hope so. Next setting is you're gonna have your, your resistive readings and it's gonna start with your continuity. So continuity is just telling you that there's some kind of electron flow and you're good, man, with this meter, that, that tone that it generates is just god awful. It sounds like someone's murdering a multimeter. It is not pleasant by any stretch of the imagination. Just a 
brutal tone there for continuity. Let's go ahead and look at our uh, resistive. We have times one, times 10, and times a thousand. I have two different readings here. There's also another caveat to the resistive readings is you're gonna notice this little wheel up here. And that's for you to dial in your resistive readings with a known good resistor. That is something that I really don't like about this meter. We're gonna go ahead. And this again is why it's kind of silly, but it's like you almost need two multimeters to make sure how you're interpreting your analog meter is correct. And it's, I really don't like that. So what we're gonna do, polarity, that's your red and your black is not gonna matter for your resistive measurements. I have a 10 ohm known good resistor. Now you could read the bands of your resistor to verify what it's rated for. Keep in mind that resistors have a tolerance, a threshold of what they're rated for. And so I think this is plus or minus 5% of that reading. So yeah, this one's reading right on the money at 10 ohms, but that's not gonna be the case with every resistor, even out of the same pack. So that being said, we're gonna go to the top times one, we're gonna be looking at this scale up here, this green at the very top. Now, I'm gonna slip on these leads just for filming purposes. What you're gonna wanna do is hook up your known resistive value. Okay, it's reading right on the money at 10 ohms, but you can use this wheel to dial it in. See how much that matters? And so if you were doing some testing and you didn't know that you bumped this wheel, that could get you in some serious trouble if you're trying to read some stuff. It's gonna be important that you check it regularly I wish there was some kind of lock-in feature with this wheel so that you could dial it in and lock in, you know, whatever, but that's neither here nor there. So we have our 10 ohm resistor dialed in because next up, another thing that I'm seeing that's not on here is I don't see a diode measurement. So this is 47K ohm resistor. So we'll go ahead and put it to the times 1K setting on our analog meter and let's see where it comes in at. It should read 47 and then remember because the resolution we set it to 1k so it's reading just a touch under 50 so for accuracy you know I would say that's not terrible but things that you're gonna have to really pay attention to with the meter like this is your resolution and your scaling next up we have DC amps looks like we can go up to 5 milliamps you'll also want to pay attention when you're doing stuff like this is down here on your port it says 500 milliamps DC that's what this port is rated for this port up here is rated for 10 amps DC. I have a 25 milliamp load test set up for us. And remember, when we're measuring amperage, our tests are always going to be in series with our circuit. Something really important. Knowing that difference between series and parallel. Something I didn't used to take very seriously when I was first learning electronics or circuits. Because I am completely self-taught. It's probably evident in these videos. Because I have a 25 milliamp load, I'm going to set it to 20. Excuse me. I'm going to set it to the 50 amp setting. Let's go ahead and take a look at our reading here. You see the, the needle going back? It's trying to tell us that it doesn't like the polarity. So that's another disadvantage to an analog meter. A digital meter would have just put a negative sign and still given you a reading. So I am looking between the DC and the AC because I'm on the 50 scale. I'm looking at this 50 and you'll see it's going to hit that 25 and I'm on 50 M. So that's 50 milliamps. So this is reading 25 milliamp load. Then we'll see if we set it to the 500 scale, we're getting barely anything. Let's set it to five and it should pegs out the needle. So that's going to be something else that's frustrating is you're looking at this scale. Really only the 50 is lining up. The 10 and the 250 are different scales than the five and 500. That That'll get you in a lot of trouble if you don't know exactly what to look for. So I really don't like that about this meter. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and do, I have a two amp DC load. So notice I've switched my meter lead to my port. It's rated for 10 amps. I'm measuring two. Let's have our polarity right because it's gonna freak out on us can see that it's going to use this 10, 0 to 10 scale here between the AC and DC here in black. So it's telling us 2 amps. And again, that's why it's like you're going to want almost like redundancies or a lot of practice using a meter like this before you try and go and troubleshoot something out in the field. All right, switching my leads back. Now we're going to be doing just DC voltage. 
Okay, so I have 12 volts basically right on the money and we can verify what voltage I've got set up here for us. Let's go ahead and just take a look. 1199, I mean, it's pretty much dead on 12 volts see how our meter is doing first let's go ahead and set it to 50 because that's the scaling that we would we know it's more than 10 but less than 50 and then we can read you know this center 50 so this needle should pop to like right there okay and then let's see reverse polarity brings the needle down Okay, that's something new, that's something interesting. When we pegged it in reverse polarity, brought that needle down, corrected the polarity, and now it won't bring that needle back up, you have to do a reset on the meter to get it to read again. So that's gonna be something else to keep in mind with the meter like this. That's gonna get you in a lot of trouble. Let's look at the 250 scale. Should see that it should barely register anything. That means I'm reading off this very top row. Let's bring it down to the 10. Should peg that needle out indicating that it's out of range. That's the GMT 319. Uh, no backlight, does have a kickstand, takes two AAA batteries. The owner's manual is only available online. Didn't come with the owner's manual. This is okay. I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner at all. If that's, this is like a hobbyist meter. This is someone that already has a lot of experience using meters and would get a specifically analog multimeter just for the advantages that an analog meter can have. So there's my thoughts on it. Hope this video was helpful. Again, if you all have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to clear everything up and I'll catch you on the next one.